Hey guys, Big Al here. Today we're continuing our video series on reloading for the 22 Hornet. And right now we're going to do some case trimming. So the uh, first of all, the overall length of the, or the overall case length is supposed to be about um, 1.4. So anything under that I will leave and anything over that I will trim to the correct length. They're not all the same number of firings or same brass, so they're not all going to be the same, but so far they're all pretty much right at the mark. That one's a little long. I'll touch it up a little bit. <laughs> Doesn't take long on this case trimmer. I had a um, attachment where you can use a drill to put on the back of it to in theory speed up your process but I did not find it did that because of how it was set up but still might be a good idea so yes I'm measuring it before and after on each one just to make sure that I am getting correct case length on these. That case length will matter for uh, some chambering, make sure we're not getting to, getting into the rifling, especially for this one because the uh, throat is pretty short. A little 22 cartridge, so. Got about 50 of these to load. Again, this doesn't take that long, even with a setup like this. These are all pretty good, I think. They must have been trimmed last time. Almost looks like I have a neck split there, but I think that's just, yeah, that's just out of residue. pretty much at the right amount. So yeah, I'm being a little meticulous about this, but it's definitely worth it. You don't want cart uh, cases too long. There we go. Yeah, this is a uh, Redding case trimmer. Just change out the uh, mandrel size for the different cartridges. And you can adjust this with a screw here for length. Um, it's universal and the fact that you can put pretty much any cartridge and they got little steps for different sizes and just screw that down. And, uh, Put anything in there. It's got to adjust the distance between the cutter and the case holder. So pretty good here. A lot of these are pretty short. Must have trimmed them last time. I actually survived. Which is good. Touch over. Yeah, I've thought about getting a case prepping station where you can do, you can pretty much clean the cases pretty good and um, trim them and chamfer them and clean the pockets, iron pockets, but they're not cheap. Between like 100 and 200 bucks you can get one of those stations, whereas opposed to this is only like 
seventy dollars, but do a lot of cases, it's probably worth it. I don't do that much. Just for load here and there on the weekends and shoot the next. Last of a good bit too for me. Just don't shoot that much. If I did a pistol or something, I would definitely do that. But I do not do that yet, so. I was going to do a review on that um, drill adapter for the trimmer, but it was not um, satisfactory, so I'm not actually going to do a review on it, because really not much to see. You have to use the drill for everything, because it's attached to it, so when you're spinning down the... Uh, case thing here to clamp onto the brass it's too aggressive and it like kind of ruins not ruins but that's the uh, uh, case head area so it's kind of the rim or whatever it's kind of unfortunate so I'm not a big fan of it I don't want my brass to be all dinged up just from reloading it But yeah, this was a lot less cases than I thought I would have to trim, but I still gotta show you. Because I still do trim them. I think some of these were really marred up from the last time I trimmed them so they have trouble. Get in there. Good. Got all this brass from a large batch of reloaded 22 Hornet ammo that came with the gun, but for some reason, almost every shot, the case neck split. And I just have not had that issue with my brass of the ones that didn't split. I reloaded them and I haven't had that issue, so I don't know what was up with those reloads. Their velocity wasn't especially high. No, they were using a 45 grain bullet, but still. Okay, so I finished all 47 of those. I am going to go over and get my uh, champering tool. And uh, we're going to chamfer the case mouths. And then we're going to use the... Um, there's a little screw-in thing on the case trimmer that has primer pocket cleaners and we will clean the primer pockets and we'll go from there okay I'm back with the uh, chamfering tool so for each one of these I'm just going to inside chamfer outside chamfer then whoops that case does not have its primer out it's the only case I have without a primer out of it well that's unfortunate let's put that one aside restart <laughs> chamfer this one inside outside Primer pocket, it's nice and dirty. 
and prime pocket cleaner. Twist it around a few times, tap it out. Pretty clean. This part takes longer than you'd want, which is why a case prep station would be kind of nice. A lot of people don't clean their prime pockets, but I do, so. Just don't see a point in having a different amount of stuff in there, so the seating just, there's no way it's consistent if you don't clean them. But, maybe it is. Maybe I'm just wasting my time. I like this chamfering tool. If you don't have a little adapter on your case trimmer, it also has adapters that come with it and they screw on to the ends of these and you can store it inside as you can probably hear. Um, also it's kind of nice because it's got a lot larger of a handle so you can really get a good grip on it. And it's gnarled so it won't slip. But case prep station would definitely be your best bet in this scenario. Especially when you're doing 50 plus But for something like this, it's not completely necessary. I've had some issues with my videoing and video editing process, so I have not been recording very many reloading videos lately. Um, I have, however, been doing some reloading, so I've been reloading for my 243. Great gun. Not as accurate as you would hope, but great gun. Because of that, of the accuracy issues, I kind of went through every possibility of powder and bullet combination just to see if it would shoot anything. And it shoots them, and it shoots them consistently, but just not quite up to what I would be hoping out of that gun. Ruger Model 77, I know some people have had headache accuracy issues out of those. Not major accuracy issues. Oh, there goes a piece of grass. Save that for later. Just not super impressive for the overall quality of the gun. Otherwise, we're not talking two inch groups, but it's hard to get them below an inch on that gun, which is surprising. I do have some that will shoot out of it. They're like 70 grains and 87 grains. So that area, which is already where the 243 wants to shoot, anyways, but. I was hoping that it would shoot 60 grain hollow points well. It doesn't, unfortunately. And then I tried some 100 grain boat tails. They didn't shoot great either, but none terrible. There's not, not, not no super terrible groups, just all mediocre. The gun, I like the gun. I have a, a light Timney trigger in it. Burris Full Field 4. I really like the reticle on the Burris Full, full, full Field 4. It comes to hunting and some uh, mid range varmint shooting. I think it's a really good reticle. Uh, it's illuminated as well. That reminds me, I need to replace the batteries on it. I left it on one day. Yeah, so Ruger M77 Woodstock 20 inch barrel though, and I like that. Nice and short. You can still get some decent velocities out of it. And, uh, 
It'll handle all the max loads, at least it has so far. And it's just a very pleasant gun to shoot. Great round for uh, deer hunting, especially in our area. People around here like to use bigger stuff, but not really necessary. The reason we chamfer these case mounts is multiple reasons. One is so that the uh, bullet seats nice and well inside the case and consistently. And also so that, especially the ones that were trimmed, they don't get stuck in the chamber or any of the stuff folded back. But whether they're trimmed or not, I like to chamfer them anyways, just to keep them all consistent for seating. But yeah, this process is definitely one that definitely should probably speed up some way or another. Powder measuring is another one that usually takes a little longer than I wish it would. But for this case, it usually doesn't. I actually am using an old antique uh, powder measure. That's how I put it in my mount that I have for the um, Forster or Bonanza bench rest powder measure. I put it in the same mount. Um, it has a little set screw in it that you can screw up into it, but it's not quite strong enough to hold on to it, so you gotta get a, uh, a crescent wrench and tighten it down a little bit. But it's a kind of a cool powder measure. Uh, later video, I'll probably show you it. At this point, I haven't decided if I'm going to make this video series or just one video. This 2200 reloading. I think it's going to be a video series, so probably come out. Um, periodically, so we'll see. I haven't been getting that much content in, so try to space it out a little bit. People don't usually watch my longer videos that much, so might as well make them shorter and longer, and uh, just more of them. This video is going to end up being long because it's such a monotonous um, task, but if you're still watching, Hope you've enjoyed. If you're still watching, I ask you to like, share, and subscribe. So there will be more content like this coming your way. I did get a new powder measure. I got an RCVS. It's actually a really good deal. I got it at the gun show. Uh, the entire thing was 60 bucks. It came with a mount. Um, came with the powder measure, of course. And the, and the guy had a... Sure, ding up that case. Looks good. Uh, the guy that had it before had bolted it to this really strong magnet. Apparently, all his reloading tools were all bolted to these magnets. And he had this big steel workbench that everything you just put on and that's kind of a cool system that I don't have that system however I mounted it to a 10 pound weight it holds it pretty good yeah I prefer it when it comes to adjusting things I prefer I prefer it over the uh, Bonanza bench rest pattern measure their accuracy is pretty much the same or at least I can't tell the difference but um my scale can't tell the difference, but it's so much faster to adjust when you have to do like a ladder test or something, or you're just trying to adjust to a new charge. The other one just takes forever. I also figured out that I wasn't quite 
letting all the powder flow out before I um, manipulated the uh, handle back down on that bench press powder measure. So I might have better results out of that soon. We'll see. Just don't use it as much. I have it for, set for a particular load for 243. It's also using it for 30 at 6. I got that gun back out. Savage 111. Synthetic stock. It's not a very good looking gun, but it really does shoot well. Everything I shot out of it is just. It likes to shoot. Every deer I shot with it. Perfect kills, but it's really not have much to do with the gun. Loads I've done out of it are great. I'm actually right now I'm doing a 220 grade load in it. 2400 feet per second. And um, it's accurate. So I think I'm actually going to use that this year for deer, we'll see. Along with another 243 load, because I just love that gun. The, uh, the uh, Savage uh, 30-06, it has a Bushnell Elite 3-9 scope on it. That's a nice scope. It's funny, the crosshair is slightly thicker than I'm used to. which. Seems like they're all relatively similar, but it's a little thick. It's a great gun, though. Great scope, too. I like the scope otherwise. Trigger slightly adjustable. Could be improved a little bit. It's sad. Uh, I've improved most of the triggers on my guns, but it's just under four pounds, I think. Three and a half, somewhere around there. I figured that gun is such a like, basic deer rifle that there's no reason to make that trigger any better. I can shoot it well, it breaks cleanly. And consistently. And I mean, if I can shoot three quarter inch groups with that trigger, then it's definitely good enough. For hunting, I usually don't want them too light, but. I haven't actually found that that is a big deal. Other people say that, but I have yet to find that to be the case. However, I'm willing to be convinced otherwise. I definitely like my 243 trigger, though. That's like two pounds. A video on that. Chimney trigger installation. Wasn't that hard, but the stock wasn't inleted for the adjustable uh, travel. I didn't know that, so I thought the trigger was like catching on stuff, so I started grinding away all, everything on the trigger until I realized it was just the stock's problem. So then I just got Dremel tool and took out some wood and then it worked perfectly fine. Explain that in the video though, so I'm gonna check that out. You can. It's on my channel. Yeah, this video is going long now, alright. Twenty-five minutes or so. We're just trimming and chaffering. And you get to listen to me talk, so. It's a win win. <laughs> Not really. But yeah, each one of these pretty much do the same. By the way, on the 243, now that I have a chronograph, I can test velocities, and 
I was getting really, really good SDs. I was getting standard deviations, single digits, extreme spreads, like 15 and 16. And uh, so that definitely wasn't the issue for the accuracy. Not like that matters, that 100 yard testing, but I was making good loads. They just. The harmonics. It just doesn't like it. Now it's a bedded gun. It's brief loaded. Barrel's light as heck though. This is a factory barrel, so. Guess I don't know how much I want to expect out of it. Some factory barrels though shoot quarter inch groups, so. With certain bullets. This one doesn't even shoot three quarter inch groups very well. Once in a while, or at least with those 70 grains and 87 grains, I haven't done in a while because I already shot a deer with that one. So, I wasn't really interested in that load, but it shot pretty good out of the hunting loads that I loaded up. If you got guns like that where they cost eight hundred dollars or whatever new and they're just okay for accuracy. And you got guns like this twenty two Hornet where it costs like thirty eight dollars or whatever in nineteen fifty. And it shoots three quarter inch groups. Like, that's way better than you would expect out of it. At least what I would. Definitely not complaining. Not real versatile when it comes to big game. Wouldn't want to shoot deer with that. But. Okay, so that's it. Finished up trimming and chamfering. All those cases, except this one, apparently the primer didn't get popped out of it. Don't know what I was doing. But yep. Yeah. Stay tuned for the next video on this. We're going to go over priming. And then we'll probably go straight into powder. We'll see. See ya. Have a good day.